In today's video, I thought I would try English paper piecing, quilt as you go. If you enjoy this channel, if you hit that like button and please subscribe and share, that helps me so much. As you can see, we're getting ready for spring. I was able to get some fresh air today. It snowed again, but it quickly melted, so definitely spring is on the way. I ordered some special fabric for this project because I want to do something a bit Valentine's Day themed and I'm going to make a English paper piecing heart. So I went on the computer, printed out some shapes. Of course the true English paper piecing gurus <laughs> buy their shapes pre-cut because they are not going to be perfect if you cut them yourself. But I thought, hey, I'm going to try this. For my first time as least expensive as possible so that's what I did so first of all you have to cut out your shapes and then you need to cut out your shapes on the fabric of course if you have a, a rotary blade this is going to be even more precise I do not so I just had to use scissors but it worked out fine for me and then you can use fabric glue so I had this fabric glue laying around and it worked perfectly fine you just glue down the edges trying to avoid the very edge of the fabric and paper leaving a little bit of gap in between basically so that way you can easily run the needle through so this wasn't very hard and of course um, it being my first time it wasn't completely perfect but I was surprised that it wasn't that difficult at all and quite relaxing you can easily watch a movie while you do this and it doesn't require too much thought So I just pasted down all of the edges to each um, triangle shape that will form my heart. And this is what it looks like. You can see the little tails, but don't worry, those tails will get covered up when you stitch it together. So I have a big triangle attached to the small triangle that's going to form half of the heart, and I'm just going to whip stitch it together. I used some white thread for this. And I did teeny tiny stitches to try to make it as invisible as possible. This was not hard, just took a little bit of time. And yeah, they ended up being fairly invisible despite the white thread against the red background. Here's a close-up view. You can kind of see what they look like. And then when you unfold it, this is half of the heart. Now I'm going to stitch the two halves together, doing the same method. And it looks like this. And then I'm going to just take out the paper pieces from the back. And they're easily removed. And then I went ahead and just pressed it to really make sure they're folded well down. And then I moved them to the green background. This is actually from the last dress I made. I had some leftover fabric. So I cut them in, I believe they are nine by nine inches, if I remember correctly. Um, and then I just whip stitched them on as an applique to each square using some basically just your thread and your needle. I tried a couple of methods. I tried holding it like this, stitching it along. I also um, some of them I folded in half, similar to the paper piecing method, but I found the very best way to stitch on the applique was to simply leave it on the table like this. This made sure that it would lay really flat 
and keep from puckering the fabric on bottom too much. So my quilt was definitely an experiment in figuring out the best way to do this. But I found it very relaxing and not difficult, which um, gave my brain a bit of a rest because whenever I'm sewing a dress, it's a lot of thought. So I, I found it very relaxing. Then I cut out my batting. And this batting did have some glue on one side of it, which I guess was supposed to be helpful, but I didn't end up liking it. But it worked out all right. And then I cut out this other fabric for the backing, which was, I think, 12 by 12, something like that. And I'm just going to put it in the center and double fold the edges to stitch around each one of the pieces. Now some people have a little tool that they just roll across it, they don't even use an iron, but I used my iron because I just felt like it, it worked better and I didn't have that other little tool, whatever that's called, but true quilters, they have wonderful tools to help them do this. But it, it, it worked just fine like this. So I pressed all four sides and then double folded them over the patchwork and over the batting. And I have these wonderful little fabric clips actually. I've had them for a while but I never used them. And for this project they were absolutely perfect. Which means I didn't actually need any pins. You just clip them along the edge to hold it in place. It was so easy to do, and I had never used these clips before. Because I'm always afraid it will tear the tissue, but it worked perfect for this project. And then I folded the sides. You could miter the corners, but I just did it more like um, wrapping a present, <laughs> which made it a bit bulky on the corners, which is something to be mindful of. If you'd want to avoid the bulk, you could do it a different way, I'm sure. But for me, I wanted to keep it as easy as possible, and it was my very first time trying this quilt as you go. So, this is what I came up with. And it worked very well. You could also make pot holders this way. And then after I got it all clipped, I just took it to the machine, stitched it all the way around, all four sides. And I thought about doing some quilting, some hand quilting in between, but I didn't end up doing. As you can see, there are some ripples, and I think that's caused by the glue. So batting with glue is not my, not my favorite thing, but for this time it's okay. It stitched really easily and came out nice and neat. And then I just whip stitched all of them together. And I ended up with nine squares here. And I hung it on my wall so I can easily come back to it and add more to it later. And for now, it just makes a nice little display. And here we are, as you can see, Hope is playing in the chair. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment uh, on your experience with English paper piecing. I'll see you next time.